I'd like to take a look at rotational systems in general because we're going to be talking about motors. In particular, I'd like to look at this formula, power equals torque times angular velocity, and explain what exactly torque means and how this formula comes about. First, let's consider a linear system because I think it's something that we're all a little bit more familiar with. Power equals work done per unit time. Work is energy measured in joules, and if the time is measured in seconds, then the power would have units of watts. Work can be related to distance. If you apply a force over a greater distance, then more work has been done. Consider an example where a person wants to push a weight a certain distance d. If they push with force F measured in newtons over a distance d measured in meters, then the work done is measured in newton meters or joules. If the person pushes the block over a greater distance, then more work will be done. If the person pushes the block faster, then more power is applied. Let's now consider a rotational system rather than just a linear system. I described the linear system first because I think it's a little bit easier to understand. The same formulas apply with the rotational system. In a rotational system, we can consider a case where an object is moved a distance d along an arc. The arc length in a rotational system is just given by the radius times the angle. If a force is applied along the direction of arc, then power is just force times r theta per unit time. Now I'd like to consider the meaning of torque. Imagine that we have a platform attached to a wall. A weight is sitting on the platform a distance r away from the wall. Let's consider a second situation where the block has been moved to the end of the platform. In which of these two situations will there be more stress where the platform connects to the wall? Will it be the first situation or will it be the second situation? Our everyday experience tells us that it's the second situation where there'll be more stress where the platform meets the wall. The reason is not because the block exerts a greater force. The force of gravity is the same in both situations, pulling the block down. The force is the same, so what's different? Well, what's different is the torque. Torque represents that twisting motion. Torque can be described as the force applied times the distance at which that force was applied away from the axis of rotation. In the first example, the torque equals F times R. In the second example, it would be F times 2R. If I go back to my equation describing the rotational system, I can see force times R in the numerator of the equation. That's the torque. I can also see theta divided by the time. A change in angle with respect to time is just the angular velocity omega. We now have the equation describing the power of a rotational system, torque times angular velocity. Typically, this omega would be measured in radians per second. I'd now like to look at two constants that we typically use to describe motors. These constants depend on the physical construction of a particular motor. For example, the torque constant might depend on how many windings a particular motor has in its armature, and it might depend on the strength of the magnetic field in the stator of the particular motor. There's typically a linear relationship between the torque and the current for a particular motor. As you increase the current supplied to a motor, you'll get more torque. How much more torque you'll get depends on the torque constant. So different motors have different torque constants, and it usually depends on how many windings a motor has in its armature. The torque constant is just the ratio of torque to current. If you put in more current, you'll get out more torque, but the ratio tends to stay constant for a particular motor. In order to introduce the back EMF constant of a motor, I'd like to first look at a simple mathematical model of how a motor operates. When you apply a voltage to a motor, there's going to be some electrical losses and there's going to be mechanical losses, but ultimately what you want is for all of the electrical power that you supply to that motor to wind up as mechanical power at the output shaft. That is, you want all of the electrical power to be converted into torque. How can we model that power in an electrical circuit? The electrical losses can be modeled by a resistor. Motors tend to have very long wires inside wound up around the armature, and if it's not a permanent magnet motor, then the stator would also have windings. Since the wires tend to be very long, the resistance can end up being somehow substantial. The voltage that's otherwise developed in a motor is called the back EMF. The electrical power developed is just the current times the back EMF. This represents the power that you input to the motor that doesn't get converted into heat by resistive loss in the windings. This is sometimes referred to as power developed in the motor. In other words, it's just current times the back EMF. 
The back EMF is measured in volts. If a motor is not spinning at all, the back EMF will be zero. You can't have a voltage across a motor that's not spinning. As a motor spins faster and faster though, then the back EMF will start to increase until the motor hits its maximum operating speed. It turns out that that's the condition where you don't have any load attached to the motor. The back EMF constant relates the back EMF, or the voltage developed at the motor, to the speed at which the motor is rotating. This tends to be fairly constant in motors. It turns out that the torque constant and the back EMF constant are equal to one another. Let me show you why. We know from what we did just above that the mechanical power in a rotational system is just the torque times the angular velocity. I can relate these two powers to one another. The left side of the equation is the back EMF constant and the right side of the equation is the torque constant. Torque has units of newton meters in the SI system. Current has units of amperes in the SI system. Back EMF has units of voltage, and omega has units of radians per second. These two constants are only equal to one another if you keep track of the units and make sure that they're both in the SI system. For example, if the rotational velocity were hypothetically expressed in RPMs rather than radians per second, then of course you can't automatically assume that these constants are equal to one another. By the way, sometimes if you see torque constant in the data sheet of a motor, you might see a slightly different unit. You might find that the word Weber is in the denominator of the torque constant. You might also see Weber in the denominator of the back EMF constant. The reason it's there is because Weber is a unit of magnetic flux. In some motors, the magnetic flux is adjustable. For example, in a motor where the stator is an electromagnet with windings, you can adjust the current through those windings to change the magnetic field of the stator. In such a situation, you can effectively change the torque constant. In a permanent magnet DC motor though, the flux through the stator is constant. It's just a function of the magnetic field strength of those permanent magnets. In such a situation, it's impossible to adjust the torque constant and normally you wouldn't see Weber's in the denominator there.